This is Deeper Than The Cuts. We are back inside of Executive Cuts right outside of downtown Detroit. T. What's up? What's up, brother? T. It's Deeper Than The Cuts. It's Deeper, it's deeper Than The Cuts. <laughs> we got Zeke back from New Era Detroit in what the up, building. Though? What up, yeah. though? What up, though, brother? What's happening? Okay, Zeke. So we've been talking about for quite some time, 2024, New Era Detroit, 10 years of existence mm -hmm. in the city of Detroit. But what's <clears> interesting, <throat> I've noticed more recently, you've been going to multiple cities across the country, sharing your message, pushing the movement forward. Elaborate on what's, what's been going on. What have you been up to when, you, when you're traveling outside of Detroit? Uh, so originally, um, and this, is, this goes all the way back to uh, 2015, mm -hmm. uh, when we first went to another city, which was Chicago. So um, just to give you all a quick backstory on how we even started to move around the country. Um, in 2015, actually December 4th, um, for those of you who are not familiar with that, that's the day um, a Fred Hampton Day uh, in mm. in uh, Chicago, um, and they always do something big in front of the house that he was assassinated in. Um, you know, uh, Chairman, um, his 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 son. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they they host something big. So we had some guys that was uh, OG Black Panthers that kind of knew, um, you know, of us and knew what was going on in Chicago. Y'all got to get out to Chicago and link up, yada yada. So we took a bus full of people out there. Um, we took a, a, a whole Greyhound uh, to Chicago and we met up and, and of course everything with us is organized so when you see us we get off the bus we in all black we in single file line we in Chicago people in the shy looking like what the what, what, you know, <laughs> what, what, what is what, this what, what's going on? <laughs> what, what, what we got going on here um, so you know we get out we 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 um, approach the uh, the gathering and you know, I give a speech out there um, and, you know, the people in Chicago is just like, OK, this is different. Like what y'all what, what y'all be doing in Detroit? So, you know, we this is in the height doing like a lot of our shutdown time. So people ain't never seen businesses get shut down like how we were doing it mm -hmm. during that time. They would see people get out and protest with signs and stuff like that. But you wouldn't see people just come out of nowhere, man, a couple hundred deep and all black and just surround a business and just shut stuff down like that. And, you know, and just demand our respect. So it was just one of those things where we just got to get our respect back. And when we went to Chicago, um, you know, the after right after we left that, it was it was like, where y'all want to go? I said, well, take us to the roughest hood in the city of Chicago. We you know, we get off south the, or west. We get off the bus 70 deep. And then at this time, we done added about another 30, 40 people. Yeah. So I'm like, let's go where it's up. You know what I mean? And of course, they take us to the middle of O Block. So we out mm. in 2015 in the middle of O Block, <laughs> deep, all black from Chicago. Mm -hmm. People couldn't understand the audacity at first. You know, it was it was welcoming because it was like, y'all coming here? You feel me with this? And But the message was to unify the culture. Like, man, we got to, you know, stop all of this. We got to be able to grow. We got to be go able to develop. You can go to Navy Fear. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Old block. There we go. Yeah, we went from the D. You know what I mean? Like, that's one thing. Detroit is a very rough place to maneuver around, man. And it, and it, it really breeds you to be able to move around a lot of spaces. That's why you see a lot of people um, with a lot of growth in business or whatever they doing they always branch out and expand because yeah. once you learn from this city you yeah. know you can go and do whatever you want anywhere yeah. so for us it was just like after we did that you know and this was in the height of you know a lot of gang stuff it was mm -hmm. a lot going on when we went out there and yeah. we got so much respect just by having the balls to go out here and 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 to be able to do this people was like how can we start doing this here you know, and that was just the light bulb. Like, well, dang, we could probably branch off and do chapters. So two months later, the following year, 2016, in like February, we went went back to Chicago, started our chapter out there. And then we went to uh, Atlanta uh, two months later and then started a chapter in Atlanta and then Cleveland and Birmingham and so on and so on. Um, so the original goal was to make sure that we was able to just, you know, get people, you know, up and out <clears throat> to demand accountability from themselves and from the people in the community respect, you know, what we got going on in, in, in our culture. And when you create the different chapters, the new chapters, 
Does it go by New Era Cleveland, yep. New Era Chicago? Mm -hmm. Yep, New Era, whichever. So, mm -hmm. you know, we got New Era Chicago. We just left. We going to Cleveland. Um, who doing some tremendous work, man. Cleveland is, is doing a lot of good work out there, man. They follow the black print that we created um, here in Detroit uh, to a T, man. And they really making some noise out there uh, in Cleveland. Um, but the the goal was more so to to get that. But as we grew, once again, this was only I'm talking 2016. We started in 2014. Yeah. What do we know about you know organizational structure and being able to do this? So we. Was How just, old were you at the time when you started? I was when I first started. I was 28, 29 years old. So wow. it's 10 years. I just turned 30. Still an adult, but a young man. Yeah, yeah. I was in my 20s. Um, but you know we. Um, we, we, our goal is to be able to, we didn't really know what our goal was, honestly, you know what you I mean? Felt but, something. but we knew that we had the ability to mobilize okay. and organize people to get up and stand up for themselves. That was it. Just stand. Just, that's where it started Community for us. Accountability. Take yeah. a stand, take right. a stand for yourself, you know, be accountable. Go, go get out here with your head and black communities are everywhere. We don't own stuff. You know, we go to these businesses that surround it in our neighborhoods. They don't. The, uh, most of these people don't live in our communities, don't look like us, don't have invested interests in our communities. And, you know, the lack of respect is not there when we walk in these businesses, because a lot of time the lack of respect is not there for us when we mm -hmm. walk in our own communities amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we got to gain respect amongst ourselves and our people and then demand that too as well. And we won't have to be figuring out, well, why this these people doing us wrong, these people doing us wrong, because if we respect ourselves and we standing on on our business we don't have to worry about nobody else interfering with what we got going on so that was the the number one thing for the first couple of years but we started develop programs you know with the hood to hood not a hood to hood a standard we started our hood to hood 18 weeks here in the city of detroit in 2015 we did 18 weeks straight from um april all the way into august every single weekend we went to a different neighborhood Throughout the city of Detroit, we had nothing, no money, no nothing, no support, no nothing. We printed out flyers. We went to the doors. We mm -hmm. told people we a new organization in the city. You know, our goal is to help to, to evolve our, our neighborhoods and evolve our communities. What is it that you want to see? So our whole first year was going around talking to everybody in the city. What, what's the problems? What's the issue? What you want to see? So we can get a better understanding of how to organize. You get all of these people, they get in these rooms and they become special, um, you know, they, they become um, some sort of specialist in, in black people. And the people ain't never been to the community to talk to nobody. You ain't, we don't know who you are, but you make decisions based upon us. And that's, you know, that's always been something that I feel for a lot of organizations before that's just, it was just the wrong way to go about it. Like you got to go talk to the people and figure out what's going on in the streets so you can know how to move and 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 lead properly. Yeah. So for us, it took years to develop where we are today. But um, from that, now when we go to these different cities, the goal this year, and particularly with our tenth year, is not necessarily go because we go into a lot of different cities. Like mm -hmm. in Oakland, San Francisco, that was our first time out. Yeah, in so Oakland. you've been to. Of course, Chicago yeah. in the beginning, mm -hmm. Cleveland early on too. Mm -hmm. You recently have been to Oakland, mm -hmm. San Francisco, mm -hmm. Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Just just got back from Milwaukee and Any, Chicago. Okay. okay. Um, Any other cities? Yeah, man. We got further. 24 cities this year. So, yeah, we going mm -hmm. just about to every black community. We got, like I said, Cleveland, uh, Pittsburgh. We got Pittsburgh. Dayton. We got Memphis. Uh, we got a whole um, East Coast leg where we going to Philly. Uh, D.C., New York, um, and Baltimore. Um, of course, Atlanta, Birmingham. We got a Vegas chapter that's doing great. Um, Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, yep, Birmingham. Okay. Home of the Civil Rights Movement. That's right, that's right. So we, we pretty much um, in just about every black community uh, in the country where our people are, you know, our goal is to make sure that we have a certain level of connection to these cities because one thing that I realized um, and which really made us push even harder <clears throat> is that we all going through the same things. It's Absolutely. the same structures. It's the yeah. same. And I mean, from every aspect of life, it's the exact same. We deal with the same issues. Our problems here in Detroit is their same problems in Chicago. It's the right. same problems in New yeah. York. It's the same problems Community. in LA. Yeah. You know, we got Which, the same issues. It may look different because of environment, because of lingo and all the rest, how we talk, how we dress. 
you know, these are the differences, the yeah. small differences. But yeah. the bigger picture is we all are systematically in the same bubble. Yes. So oh, how do we get out of the same bubble? And then what I see is I see a lot of people doing some dope stuff in small pockets. You doing you here in this neighborhood, you holding down this neighborhood, you doing some great work. But your mindset mentality, the way the way that you working, you can be bigger. We can help out. I can come to your city and, and, and tell you what work say, yeah. in the city of Detroit. <laughs> And what and what's working for us, what's not working, yeah. and I come to your city. You can tell me what's working, what's not working. We can share yeah, put those together. type of resources. Oh, this might I could take this to Detroit, or I we could take this yeah. and do this here. Absolutely. That's the beauty of being able to move around because we think that we all dealing with these isolated issues, and that's not the fact. The do you run? Do you run into people who cannot <clears throat> take constructive criticism? In yeah, terms I mean, of that's, elevation, in that's, terms of growth. Yeah, that's always a part of you know, doing anything. You're going to always find people that can't really, and I'll just, I, I look at it like they can't be held accountable. You yeah. know, they don't know what, if you if you don't have an understanding of accountability, then we lost, at, we done off bail because you don't have an understanding of the bigger picture. You know, we got to, accountability is the nucleus of everything that we do. So if there's none, then if you don't know how to, Take accountability or accept accountability the of life. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't be accountable. You, you got a whole yeah. other problem yeah. on your hand. It ain't nobody else's issue. It's, it's yours. Your. First exactly. accountability is self accountability. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, uh, with that being said, Zeke, I know it's it's great to see that you have an organization that has been around for ten years mm. and being able to go and affect other communities because you have successfully done some things here in the city of Detroit. Mm. Um, but what is one of the things that you said and you spoke to it a little bit about? Um, having the same problems across the nation mm -hmm. as it relates to every, uh, what would you say is the biggest problem with our community? And what is it that we can do to try and correct those problems and, and, and put, you know, a situation at hand so that we can be on the side of success instead of dealing with the, the levels of poverty and frustration that, that we deal with on so many occasions? Yeah, so <clears throat> the biggest problem that we have, um, well, the, the two biggest problems that we have, I, <clears throat> I want to go from a systematic approach and then from a people approach. So systematically, it's lack of resources. Um, and this has started a long time ago. And I feel like America really need to take a good look at itself and how we were, you know, spent all this time in slavery, spent all this time in, uh, in the segregated era, the civil rights era. You know, it's, it's 500 years collective of just being, you know, out resourced. So over the past hundred years or whatever it's been, it ain't even been out of 60 years since the civil rights movement. So we talking about six, only 60 years that we've been able to put ourselves in a position of a 500 year L, you know, it's like you didn't, we didn't, they didn't built all this wealth for, 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 for 500 years and build it off us. It's just like you own a barbershop and you know, everybody in here cut hair, give you all the money and you send them home with nothing. That's what America did to black people for four, 500 years. And now America look at us like, well, why y'all ain't got y'all stuff together? Why this, the, why that? Why y'all don't own nothing? Why y'all communities look like this? Well, you know, and originally, originally when they let us uh, go from slavery and, and with nothing and just said, go, go get it out the mud. We did. We did a great job of that. We built black communities. You got uh black bottom here. You got Black Ooh, Wall Street, and yeah. we built probably. We black did have Black Bottom. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. That's what I just said. I said we Locked had yeah. Black For Bottom. Sure. We had Paradise Black Island. Wall Street. Yep. We had all of these things, and then what happened? Oh no, y'all doing too much. Burn down, burn down. You know, run freeways, freeways. through stuff. Yeah. So when we were building, they still kicked us down, and then once again, you start to go to. You know, uh, the, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, we had to deal with the red line. And now we got to deal with this. Now y'all going to put us in the poorest areas. Y'all going to um, make sure that we can't get mortgages. Or if y'all give us a mortgage, it's going to be something outstanding or something crazy. You know, y'all going to over excess in black communities. Literally, just do everything that you possibly can to put us in this position. Yeah. So now, this is how Hoods and the Ghettos was created in America. You put our people in areas where we don't have resources, where education is poor, mm -hmm. where food is poor, where all of these things uh, is bottom feed, and then you want to look up 
60 years later and asks us, well, why are we, why, why y'all not doing this? Or yeah. why is it, is, is this, why, why are we not educated? Why are we not, you know, flourishing in business and people in West Bloomfield can look at us like, you know, it, no, y'all did this. Remember yeah. y'all did this systematically. And then that's the system. Come to our people, our people. We have accountability too. I'm accountability guy on both ends. Yeah, yeah the right. system in this country got a lot to do with where we are here today, but we got a lot to do with where we are today too as well. Where's the accountability when it comes to us? Because the number one, you ask what's the number one issue that I see in black communities? Yeah. It's the youth running wild. The youth running wild, they shoot, they don't have no care, concern for life. They can take a life and not blink and they can go to the mall right after. They, they shoot, kill you and go on about your day yeah. Like nothing matter. They're so desensitized. They don't. They don't respect. There's no code. There's no morals. There's no ethics. That's on us. We drop the ball on those things. So because there's no code, because there's no morals, because there's no ethic, because there's no respect, we live in a community where we got grown men are scared of six, fifteen, yeah. sixteen, yeah. seventeen year old kids yeah. that's literally out here committing. This many of them, though, it's all of us. We this big circle. Right. It's this many people out here, young guys that's doing bad stuff. And we won't even step up and say, OK, we're going to take guys from this big old circle and we're going to double down on all the guys that's out here that's doing wrong and take our communities back. No accountability, because why? What's more important, the basketball game, the football game, the clubs, the girls, the get money like that. That has put us in a position where we we all of those things, none of them include the babies. Mm -hmm. So once we stop forgetting about the babies and growing culturally, that's on us and yeah. systematically where they at. That's on them. Yeah. So we have to yeah. look ourselves in the mirror um, as yeah. well, because that yeah. is what's happening in every Black community across right. America is the same exact format yeah. systematically, and when it comes to us, it's funny you say, I, Josh. No, I don't go for it. Don't go for it. It's for crazy it. because I was thinking the same thing. We know the systematic product process that was in place. Mm -hmm. It was clear. It's, it's 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 documented. It's history, and we realize it, and we won't negate it. But we still hold a level of responsibility to mm -hmm. ourselves, right? Yeah. And so it's like just because somebody did me wrong that don't mean I can't live life at a better pace at this right. point in my life right mm -hmm. and so being able to understand that what I was trying to get to and I'm glad to hear you even talk about our mm -hmm. youth because mm -hmm. I think the biggest That's piece big. is biggest. mentorship mm -hmm. if we do not mentor these young children and these young boys and girls I it's promise over. you it's they're over. going to learn mm -hmm. from what TikTok has said mm -hmm. what Instagram has Streets. said and it ain't nothing but lies on, mm -hmm. the, on, the, on the online mm -hmm. and if we don't never get to a point in our mind where we say you know what I got to take back responsibility. That's why, you know, we went back to the school to teach because yeah. we wanted to mentor yeah. uh, the young barbers in, yeah. in, in America. Yeah. And, and, and I'm yeah. talking to other people yeah. uh, dealing with stuff, dealing with the county, deal, you know, trying to make sure that you have some level of mentorship. Can you reach everybody? No, you can't. It, it's, uh, you try. But the reality of it is you can't control what a person's going to do. But mm -hmm. you do have to put in the work. And you do have to put in the time. And that's what I respect about New Era Detroit because you guys do get out there in the communities. You get out there and you make sure that you're visible. And you make sure that the people know they have somebody fighting for them on the other side, for, especially for the ones that don't feel like they have nobody mm -hmm. to help them. Yeah. Women, elderly, and children yeah. is what we're responsible for in our yes, community, sir. making sure that we cover them and, and make sure that they're well cared for. Yeah. And the fact that you do that, man, I, I, I salute that. Appreciate I think, that, brother. I think, Appreciate man, that. That's, that's, that is awesome. And just to piggyback off of that, it's like, you know, we grew up in times, you know, I'm, I'm 46, so I grew up in times where we had that support, mm -hmm. where we had the support to grow and cultivate the community. Mm -hmm. You've seen more of what you're doing in those times, and then you had the elders, you had that, that next level, the next gener the older generation to step in and make sure that we were doing the right things. The, nice. the, we had the neighborhood watches, we had the big four, we had different entities to make sure the community was was running correctly as far as the children's getting to school on time. Mm -hmm. We walked to school for blocks and blocks and blocks. Nothing ever happened. Why? Because there was somebody's grandmother, somebody's uncle on yep. the porch in the morning outside standing for blocks, just looking one way, <laughs> making sure the children and the kids get to work. And if you did going. something wrong, you get if back you to, get, the get to the house. house <laughs> they are they you know, get back because home. it passed down. Like mm -hmm. your mama told me that a neighbor, Mr. Smith, Mr. Kennedy, everybody yeah. saw you. Yeah. <laughs> because everybody was in the community working. Mm -hmm. But it's like now, it's like it's so awesome to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 
it, 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 it put fire under my feet as well mm. to continue that race, continue Thanks. to run because we, we deal with a lot of young men, a lot of young ladies, they're lost. Mm -hmm. There's no, I hear all the time, man, I wish I could have had you on my life hop 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, five years ago. I don't have nobody on my uncle, nobody in my circle. Mm -hmm. They support me doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk to you maybe twice a week, but mm -hmm. you know, just talking to you twice a week is more impactful than living yeah. with somebody that we share the same blood. Yeah. It's really crazy. So to see you guys, not only burst the walls out of Detroit and, and, and expand the different cities and different states to find other other like-minded individuals to get in the community and do the work and be responsible, be accountable for their own community is paramount. Man. And I, I think I think we I think we're really on to something. You guys are really doing a great job. And I, I just want to ask, like, what is it that you need, like, right now today, to grow and to do, accomplish that that ultimate goal um <clears throat> well we done built the black print you know what i mean we just need the support from the city man we need yeah. when we post something and say that we doing political education when okay. we doing uh financial literacy when we doing uh mental health when we doing conflict resolution when we working with the kids when we doing hood to hood when we doing our food programs yeah. you know if you got that time come out and support it and if yeah. you don't got the time man we are a black organization in america we need resources or we need funding. So, you know, I, I ain't got the time because I'm 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 in this I'm in this bag. I'm you know, I'm I'm You're working. I got ten businesses, I'm doing this, but hey look, you know, y'all keep doing your thing or hey look, I'm about to send you to my man, he own this, that and the third, he'll be able to help you out, yada yada. So it's just sharing resources. But don't yeah. what I hate in the city of Detroit is don't look and and the other way like we not here. Because we here, and, and if you don't know about New Era Detroit in ten years, says a lot about you. So for for us, it's just people being able to see us, appreciate the work that we doing, because we sacrifice so much. You know, I yeah. sacrifice my life, my 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 mental well being, my time. Yeah. You know, my family. I could be. I got a family too. I got kids. I could be doing. The, there we yeah. go. I could be doing the same thing that everybody else doing. Hey man, I ain't got time. I got to take care of mine. I got businesses. I got yeah. things to do too as well. So when I hear people say, man, I got, bro, but we, you not, we not no different. You a man. I'm a man. I got to take care of my family. Like you got to take care of your family. But the difference is my family includes everybody's family Community. because I know that my family, my son can't grow up being successful just off me being That's able true. to install in That's him, I have to install into the environment as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. If I'm not working on the environment that I'm raising my son is, then how am I truly raising my son to be prepared for the best world if I'm not affecting the world that he's going to live in? Yeah. So that's extremely important. We got to get out of this, just me and mine or my family. I'm taking care of mine. It's a, it's a, the environment is going to end up getting the kids sooner or later. So yeah. work on the environment while you work on the kids. That's your well-roundness. Yeah. Final question for you, Zeke. As you travel the country, 24 cities, mm. this year in 2024. Mm. Nice ring to it, by the way. That's right. Yeah. 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 See what I did there? I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, here's my question. Straightforward. With you traveling to different cities, mm. do you feel like you're getting more support from outside versus rather here in Detroit? Um, so... Here's the thing, the people, the day-to-day -day people here yes. in Detroit, man, we get so much support from That's the exactly. regular people, the day-to-day. -day. I can't go out in a liquor store, gas station, nowhere. Man, we love what you're doing. We support you. We got your back. The people in the city of Detroit supports us like none other. I don't have, I can't, that's what I cherish. But mainstream Detroit, the people with the resources, the big yeah. followers, the the, rappers, the movers and the entertainers, all yeah. of these people that can yeah. help us expand our message so much, they they sometimes treat us like we not here. You know what I mean? And that's a big issue because they own they have the the key. They're influential. To, yeah, to the masses, yeah. right? So yeah, it, it needs to be more of that. Like don't you know, don't play us like we not here. Don't have somebody come here talking about community and we not saying, okay, yeah, we got this in the city. Let me introduce y'all mm -hmm. and go off and do an event and we not involved in it. And this is what we do for a living. Yeah. So, you know, on that token, but um, I can say, man, I just went to Oakland and San Francisco for the first time ever. 
And when I say the love, man, um, the love was so real out there for just touching down for the first time. You know, that's the birthplace of the Panthers mm -hmm. in Oakland. We was work, uh, welcome uh, with open arm. Big shout out to my man, Fab. Um, he took care of us. He introduced us. He, he got um, uh, a movement called Dope Era down there in, in Oakland, man. And he do a lot of stuff for the community. He a businessman. He tapped into everything in the city, man. He welcomed us with open arms, made sure that we got connected with the right people. Um, even at the end, he like, bro, y'all in the city, I know you probably want to just chill with your people. I had all my people. He said, um, bro, threw me the keys to his club, bro, and said, ain't we ain't got nothing at the club tonight. Here go the keys. You just take all y'all people. Wasn't there, nothing. Just gave us the keys to, to his club, told us to have a good time while we was out there. I can't. I can I, I, some of these clubs I'm, they still pat me down at the door let alone just you know, throw you the keys to the club and then I met with um with uh Huey P Newton his oh. nephew um is out there too which is really really dope uh and we had a good time shut down a whole restaurant for us you know what I mean so um real love man I, I do experience a certain level of love when it comes to um, those type of things that to where maybe not so much in Detroit, but I mean, it's okay, man. It's a process. That's why so many people go outside of Detroit so that being successful in this city is weird because you literally have to go outside of Detroit, let people know outside of the city that, you know, what y'all got going <laughs> here is special. And then everybody in the city like, ah, you feel me? That's how rappers, they make it out like that. You know, these business, these people been rapping here in Detroit forever. Yeah. As soon as they get mainstream, they go out, they and then now the city like, oh, they're my, my people, or, you know, I've seen businesses do the same thing, and it's just like, we gotta, we gotta really value, you know, the people that's doing good stuff here, that's man, right. and appreciate them that's people, right. man, and, and support them people. You know, we don't need nobody else to tell us what we got is a gem here in the city. You know, we know what it is, but we don't want to look at it like that until other people look at it like that, and that's something that we gotta stop here. Uh, in the city, but the love is real, man. We get love that's from good. the people that we need the love from. All right, well, that's we gotta wrap up. up the conversation here. <laughs> that's yeah. good, man. T, D'Angelo, yeah, deep. it's deeper. Love. Always a pleasure. It's deeper than the cut.